Good morning, everyone. You all know somebody out there that needs prayer. Go ahead and share this. Invite. Sharing is caring. You never know who might need to hear this broadcast. Hit that share button. Invite your friends. Let's get this as far out today as we can. Go ahead and hit that share button and invite people. Sharing is caring. Somebody needs prayer this morning. Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer in South Florida. Founder of the Ignite Apostolic Prophetic Network and, of course, author of our devotional Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God. God is good all the time, even when he's silent. In today's devotion titled, To Calm the Storm. And here's what I heard the Lord say. What you are going through isn't going to last forever. Like a hurricane, it will pass. And you will recover your power again. The truth is, you haven't lost your power. You just feel powerless because of the enemy onslaught. So focus on the power that raised Christ from the dead that dwells in you and get back up again. <laughs> focus on me. I am your intercessor, your advocate, your standby, your comforter, and your counselor. I am everything to you that Jesus was to his disciples in the midst of the raging storm that he spoke to. I'll give you the words to speak to your storm. Only believe. 
Father, we thank you this morning for、uh, this time of prayer. Let me get to the scripture references. I'm coming out of the gate strong today. John 16, 7, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, 1 Corinthians 4 and 20. Get your own copy of the devotional and you'll find all of these、uh, scripture references and prayer starters in here. The prayer starter, the power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. Therefore, I am able to meet every challenge that comes my way. In Christ. Give me the words to speak to the storms that rage in my life. I choose to believe I am who your word says I am. Who believes it with me this morning? Father, we thank you this morning for your goodness and your grace. We love you for who you are, not what you can do for us, not what you did in the past seasons, but for who you are. You are magnificent and you are holy. There is none, no other God like you. You are high and lifted up. We give you praise and honor. We magnify your name above all. We magnify your name above the silence and we magnify your name above the noise. We magnify your name above the imaginations and we magnify your name above The emotions. We magnify your name above the commotion. We magnify your name above all because your name is greater than, bigger than. Oh, it's greater than, it's bigger than, it's more powerful than. Oh, it's greater than, it's bigger than, it's more powerful than. It's the everlasting name of the everlasting God, the one who went before us to make a way for us, the one who serves as our rear guard, the one who envelops us in his presence. The The one, the one with the capital O, O N E, the one, the one who is with us always, all the time, every moment, every second of our lives, and even into eternity. You are everywhere. You are omnipresent, everywhere, all the time. You are God, and you are good. And although things in our lives may not be going the way we'd like to see them go, although things in our lives are not escalating and elevating and ascending in the Way that it was prophesied to us, although it seems like we're decreasing and dying and losing self, although it seems contrary. The intention of your will is kind. Oh God, help us today to understand the concept of your will and the intentions of your heart being kind and the goodness of the Father. Would you help us today to be settled and satisfied knowing that your intentions towards us are kind? Even if we don't feel your kindness, even if we don't see your goodness, even if we don't understand the process, would you help us understand the intentions of your Will are kind. You intend for us blessings. You intend for us a nearness. You intend for us to understand and know your purpose in your in our in our in our in our lives and in our generation. Would you help us today, Lord, to meditate on the kind intention of your will? Your will is not just good. It's not just perfect. It's not just acceptable in your eyes, but it's kind. It's winsome. It's holy. It's to be sought after. Would you help us today, God, to shift out of the place of self, to shift out of the place of commotion and, and turmoil and, and, and overdrive in the mind, thinking, 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 and shift into the silent mode, shift into that place in you where there's quiet and there's peace, there's stillness of soul. And even of mind. Would you help us, Lord, to press past all the noise of the world and all the voices competing in the spirit to see who can turn our heads? Would you help us, Lord, to enter into that place where despite the commotion on the inside and even on the outside, we finally find that sweet spot, that silent place, that place where your still small voice can be heard louder? Than any other voice. And even when we don't hear the still small voice, even when we can't fight through the commotion in our souls, and even on the outside, the people pulling and pressing and pulling and pressing, and where are you? I didn't see you on the prayer call. And, and we had all the people and all the demands and all of the issues of life and all of the challenges and all of the prodding and the pressing and the, all of the expectations and all of the overwhelm. Would you help us, Lord, to even when we can't seem to press past it? To understand that our intention to press past it pleases your heart. 
Would you help us, Lord, to, to, to understand that even when we sit in our prayer chair and we cannot hear a thing and our imaginations are going wayward and our minds will not settle, would you help us to understand that it's not in vain that we sit in your presence, that it's not in vain that we press into your heart, that it's not in vain that we attempt, that we try to still our soul. Because you too look at intention. You look at the intention of our will. And even when we fall, and even when we stumble, and even when we, sit, we can't seem to get back up again, and even when we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, you see the end from the beginning. Would you help us to understand that just sitting down in the chair intending to seek your face even when we can't see past the tears intending to hear your voice even when the enemy's voice is so much louder would you help us to see that our intention to sit in that place pleases you because you are a God of intention you are a God who looks at the heart you are a God that examines the will And when we will to do what's right, it means something to you, even when we miss the mark. When we set out running with all abandoned towards your throne, you appreciate and acknowledge and and reward that even when we stumble on the way there over our own thoughts and over our own failures. Would you help us, Lord, to understand that you are a God of intentions who looks at the heart. Yes, you hear our thoughts. Yes, you hear the idle words. Yes, you hear the gossip. Yes, you hear the complaining. But you understand because Jesus was tempted in all manner just as we were, but he didn't sin. So, Father, would you strengthen us today to be able to stand and withstand in that place of total surrender, in that place of freedom, because surrender is freedom. Some of you have it backwards. Surrender is not bondage. Surrender is not Restriction, surrender is not missing out, surrender is not. Some of you live in FOMO mode, and that is your whole issue. You live in FOMO mode. I know a young girl, a young girl with nice blonde hair who is in her 20s, and she just really lives in FOMO mode. And this is, this is the half the root of her problems. Who am I talking to? What is FOMO mode? Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. You know why so many people don't give their lives up to Jesus? FOMO. Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. They don't know if they should go, if they should stay, if they should get married, if they should be single, if they should have a baby, if they should wait. Fear of missing out. The Lord wants to deal with that this morning. The only thing we should fear missing out on is His presence, the fullness of His joy, the healing power of God, the deliverance of our souls. The only thing we should be fear of missing out on is, is his, his will. And that comes with a fear of the Lord, not a fear of, uh, like a a soulish fear, not the the fear that the enemy puts on you, not not the fear that your parents put on you when you don't take the trash out, not the fear that is of man, but the fear that is of God. Would you help us, Lord, today to be people that if we have a FOMO mindset, it's the fear of missing out of your will, of your presence, of your joy, not of the popular whatever or the... Uh, help us today. Help us today to see what we could not see before. What we did not want to see before. Help us understand what we did not understand before. What we could not understand before. Help us understand today, Lord, the many dimensions of your beauty. Even when things in our lives look ugly. Even when we see ourselves as ugly, as dark. You see us as dark and beautiful, like the Shumanite woman in the Song of Solomon. Oh, how she struggled. Oh, how she struggled. Oh, how she struggled to ascend to that place to pursue your heart. Oh, how she fell. Oh, how she saw the dark and ugly nature of her own heart. Oh, how she saw and felt the condemnation and the guilt and the shame. And the persecution from those who did not understand where she was going and wanted to pull her back to the lower life. Oh, how she saw. But oh, how she loved. And she kept pursuing. And she kept pressing. And she kept going forward. Even when she missed the mark. Even when she didn't understand what was happening in her own heart, in her own soul. She kept on going. And this was the intention. The intention. Her intentionality got her to that place. 
where he turned back to her and said, you have ravished my heart. Just one glance. Father, help us today to understand that our relationship with you is different than anybody else's relationship with you. It's the same, but it's different. It's the same in that you love all, but it's different in that you treat us all differently, that you pull us up and, and, and bring us low at different times. Help us to, be, to stop being afraid of what we're going to lose and to be focused on what we have already gained in Christ. Help us, Lord, today to be willing to go where the people around us can't even discern. Help us, Lord, to, to, to stop uh, looking backwards and start looking upwards, to stop comparing ourselves to one another and to start comparing ourselves to you, knowing that we can never measure up, but seeing the ideal and receiving the grace to come up a little bit higher, just one more degree on this day. Help us, Lord, to stop looking around at what everybody else is doing and how everybody else has it easier or why this person doesn't have this. this Help us, Lord, to focus on you with dove's eyes. Undistracted devotion for only you. Help us, Lord, to get to that place where it doesn't matter what Sally said in church. And it doesn't matter what Bobby did at work. It doesn't matter. What matters is us in you. Us walking in your will. You giving us grace to do it. It's a divine exchange. It's the only way to peace. Would you help us, Lord? But what, what, what happens when it's silent? What happens when God is silent? What happens when you can't hear God? What are you supposed to do? A couple of days ago, I was down vacationing in, in an, on an island. And I was speaking to God about many things. Because many people are so upset when God is silent. And they get, they get so bent out of shape because they can't hear anything. What do you do when God is silent? And the Lord says, when I'm silent, you be silent. We put that directly to, towards you. When God is silent, you be silent. When God is silent, you be silent. Let me say that again. When God is silent, you be silent. Sometimes it's not the time to lift another prayer. Sometimes it's time to be still and know that he is God. Sometimes it's time to walk in Psalm 46, 10. Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes it's, 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 it's a Psalm 62, 5 moment where you just understand and wait in silence and hope in Him. Sometimes it's a Lamentations 3 and 6 season where it needs to be just good enough to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes there's nothing more to pray and nothing more to say. Sometimes your many prayers and many petitions are so repetitive in nature that they display a lack of trust rather than a fullness of faith. Ah. Sometimes you have to stand in a Habakkuk 2 and 20 moment. Knowing that the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Sometimes you've prayed enough and now you're just waiting to see the answer. Sometimes, like Daniel, you just need to get on your face after you release the prayer and let the angelic war begin over your promise, over your answer. Because sometimes opening your mouth will just cause the release of doubt. Sometimes opening your mouth will cause you to pray prayers of unbelief. Sometimes opening your mouth in the time that you should stay silent will just cause you to curse God. Will just cause you to speak words of fear. Will just cause you to undo the prayers that you already did with a demonstration and a display of disbelief. Sometimes the best prayer is called silence. When you've done all you know to do, Stand, mm mm-hmm, yes, how about this, when you've done all you know to do, be silent, be still, and know that he is God, stand, when you've done all you know to do, stand, Uh uh-huh, but some of you stand, some of us stand, and we complain, some of us stand, and we weep, some of us stand, and we hate, some of us stand, and we compare ourselves with ourselves, some of us stand, but we don't stand in silence, we don't stand being still, knowing that he is God, we stand, Picking fights with new devils and screaming and hollering at the enemy when we're supposed to be silent. See the, 
Ya ba shora ba shiri be shi. There's a time for every purpose under heaven. There were times when Je- when Jesus spoke, and there were times when Jesus was silent. You have to discern the times, not just the time of your promotion, not just the time of your healing, the time of your blessing. Ecclesiastes three, three, Ecclesiastes three and seven says, "There's a time to be silent, and there's a time to speak." Huh? There's a time to be silent, and there's a time to speak. What if we could get that one right? Father, help us today. <laughs> Sometimes there's just a Revelation 8:1 reality going on in your life. Silence in heaven for about a half an hour. So Revelation 8:1 says, "When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour." I think I think heaven is 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 largely a a loud place, but I think there are moments of silence. Some of you need to just ascribe to the Exodus 14:14 battle plan. What is the Exodus 14:14 battle plan? What is that? What is it? The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. Oh Lord, help us to see silence as of your virtue. Help us, Lord, to see silence as a virtue, not to be like the Pharisees who. Thought they'd be answered for their much talking. Help us, Lord, to hold our tongue, to hold our peace, so we can find peace. Abba shore, abba shere, bakata abba she. Ora mashtom brashta abba she ki tere be she ki tar abba she. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. And then there's another time when it's time to ask the Lord, stop being silent. <laughs> Psalm 83:1. Oh God, do not keep silence. Do not hold your peace or be still, oh God. But beloved, I tell you the truth. When God is silent, you be silent. Peradventure, He's not really being silent. But you just can't hear him above all the noise. So you could say it this way: When God seems to be silent, you surely be silent, because it's very possible, beloved, that He's not silent at all, but that you don't hear Him because of the much noise and the much talking, and the much complaining and the much whining and the much weeping and the much. Father, help us today. To be those that value silence, to be those who understand the strategy of silence, even in warfare. To those of us who are doers, like Martha, help us to, for a moment, embrace the silent adoration of Mary. Who said nothing when she was at Jesus' feet? She had just chosen the better part. Help us, Lord, to understand how to come before you without asking for anything, but just to sit in your presence and be silent, not even looking to hear anything, just wanting to sit. Come on, how many of you have a a friend or a loved one, and it's just not necessary to always talk? Doesn't mean that they're not there. Doesn't mean that they don't care. It doesn't mean that they won't have something to say in just a few minutes that impacts your life and changes your heart. Help us to understand the value of silence. Not just because we don't want to say the wrong thing, but because sometimes silence says it all. Sometimes silence. Displays a trust that words never could. Sometimes silence displays a confidence and a faith 
in God that words don't quite fully contain. Sometimes silence brings the solitude of soul for which you've been seeking. Help us today, Lord. Help us today, Lord. Help us today, Lord. You ever been in a church service where a holy hush just came over the assembly? God likes silence. He likes noise, too. He likes high praise. He loves songs of deliverance. He loves a dance and a shout. But I think that we value silence many times far less than the God of all creation. Father, we thank you today that you bring us into this place. silence and I just heard well you don't understand silence is deafening to me I don't know who you are that's thinking that silence is deafening you've got to battle 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 there is no silence for you there is no such thing as silence you know what beloved in the name of Jesus I command every demon power tormenting your mind to fall and fail and fumble and stumble in Jesus name it's not easy to get to that place but it's worth it It's not easy to silence your thoughts. But if you can get to that place of silence, there's another level of hearing, another level of receiving, a different way. Amen. 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 God is good. Hallelujah. Some of you need to practice silence today, not for the sake of not talking, but for the sake of silence. Amen. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I've just come off a good rest and I've got a a busy day, a full day ahead of me. So let us get on with some announcements and a few things. I want to leave you with that. Silence. Some of you, you'd have a, a lot less trouble in your life if you practiced this virtue. Amen? God is good. Hallelujah. Listen, if you want to sow today, you can do that at jenniferleclair.org slash give. You can sow a one-time seed there. You can become a partner there. jenniferleclair.org slash give. You can use the PayPal, paypal.me slash jenniferleclair, paypal.me Slash Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the text to give 754 701 2161. Text the word pray to 754 
701-2161, text the word PRAY. 754-701-2161, text the word PRAY. You can use the Cash App, dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire. Cash App is dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. What am I missing? P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. Amen. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to sow today. I'm not even saying much about it. I'm not giving a scripture explaining the benefits of sowing. I'm just putting out the opportunity and being quiet. Help us, Lord, today to understand the value in stillness and in not saying more than we should. I thank you, Lord, that you multiply this seed back to the giver today, back to the givers. Multiply it exponentially. Bring the harvest that only you can bring. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for all my awakening house of prayer leaders around the world, all my staff, all of my volunteers, all of my vendors, all of my intercessors at PrayForJennifer.com, all of my students in SchoolTheSpirit.tv, all of my students in the London School of the Prophets. I just, all the, everyone that's under the sound of my voice, I just say, Lord, bless them indeed. Enlarge their territory. Let your hand of power rest upon them and keep them from evil and of causing pain. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God is good. Oh, he's good. All the time. Amen, all the time. Pakistan is calling. Listen, I want to give you the opportunity. London, get out to Eventbrite. School of the Prophets and Seers, we're undergoing a... uh, a little bit of a change in a good way, adding some things. I will be, those of you signing up for the School of Prophets and Seers, I'll be bringing you a, a copy this month of my CD, Prayers That Activate Angels. I'll be teaching a little bit on angels, but also on levels of prophetic ministry and, uh, and other things as well. You can find that all uh, at jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. Uh, we have, uh, we're going to start at 6.30. We're going to start with uh, pr- prophetic intercession and uh, some warm-ups. Then I'll begin to teach. And then we'll do Q&A and impartation and exercises. We're going to do all that. We're going to do it two nights this time instead of one long day. We're going to do it Thursday night and Friday night. We're going to see if this format works better. If it doesn't, I'll go back to something else. But go to jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. If you're in London or you can get to London because we're going forward, I'm I'm putting together a a certificate program for you as well. Uh, That will start this month. Some people, what if I came the last two months? Well, those were warm-ups. Amen. The Lord spoke to me about this, and we're going to do it that way. It's going to be good. London, June the 6th and 7th. Get registered now. Don't wait, because now it's on early bird. If you are an original member, then you got a link, a private link already to register at the original uh, rate that I promised you that it was a very low rate for you if you're part of that original group. If you're registering and you're going to bring a friend, register, and then send your uh, ticket to us, and we'll send you a code for a discount for your friend to register as well. Amen. It's time to register. Y'all got to wait. Stop waiting to the last minute because I can't know how many how many CDs to bring. I don't know what to do. And go get registered if you're going to get registered. Amen. This is monthly, but we're having a degree program so that you're able to receive a graduation, your certificate, and we're going to have a nice graduation for you as well. Go get registered. Nope, we are not going to be filming it. You'll have to come in person. We, we are doing audio recordings, but we are not uh, giving audio recordings to people who, who just uh, want to buy audio recordings. That's not the way that we're doing it. We value your presence. If you're in the degree program and there's a for some reason you can't come, you can sign up and we'll send you the audios. 
but we're not just selling the audios or the videos apart from people who are registered for the course. Amen. We understand there's some people that will have to miss certain things because of this, that, or the other. That happens. Listen, get signed up for it, jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com, or you can just go to jenniferleclair.co.uk. You can see all the rest of the dates for the entire year, jenniferleclair.co.uk, as well as find out about the houses of prayer that we have there as well. Okay. Healing rooms Thursday night. In South Florida, Awakening House of Prayer. On Sunday, I'll be teaching. Oh, I can't wait for this. Building an intercessory prayer team. You need to know how to build an intercessory prayer team. Come on out South Florida or sign up at ahopu.org through the School of Ministry. Israel, I think we're running out of time on that. If you're going to get your deposit in, please do that soon. Please do that soon. tinyurl.com slash... Israel with Jennifer. I'm not doing such a great job on announcements, are I? Am I? There is a lot of witchcraft. Who discerns that? What Watchmen and Warriors Conference? This is on uh, 31st, the 1st, and the 2nd. Awakening House of Prayer. Get there. Get your tickets. It's not too late. The admission at night is free, and it's not too late. You can watch online. If you can't get out here to South Florida, you can watch online. You can watch online. But you're going to want to get out here if you can. If you're in South Florida, you got to get out here. And then AHOP Windsor, AHOP South London. Amen. We are going for it. Father, thank you today that you guide our steps, spend our time with you, whether speaking or in silence. And I break this witchcraft in Jesus' name. I come against this witchcraft In the name of Jesus. You don't have to get two days off, Cyan. It's at nighttime, 6 o'clock to 10 p.m. The problem with scheduling something like this is you just can't please everybody. No matter what I do, somebody's going to be upset that I changed it. We did it all day Friday. Everybody was upset because they couldn't get a day off. Now we're doing it Thursday and Friday night, which is actually a lot less convenient for me. And then people will be upset because it's Friday night, Thursday and Friday night instead of all day Friday. So you have to really, really, really be led of the Lord. And try different things and experiment. But you're always going to have somebody that can't come. And I'm sorry about that. It's not easy for me to come. If you want to be the truth, I know the truth of it. It's about 10 days away from home. To make the journey. Atlanta, Awakening House of Prayer. Atlanta is tonight. Get registered at jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. Awakening House of Prayer, Atlanta tonight. Get registered. Hallelujah. I'm missing something. Go get registered. Later this year, I'll be in Berlin. We'll talk about that when we get there. Seems like I'm forgetting something, but I cannot remember what it is. I guess that's the nature of forgetting something. Oh, yeah. Jezebel's Revenge. The Spirit of Adelia Rising. That's at schoolthespirit.tv. And Becoming a Next Level Prophet. The webinar that goes along with my book that comes out in July is also there. You can sign up for that webinar, Becoming a Next Level Prophet. Go find that there as well. Hallelujah. Andre, is that you? 
Andre, good to see you. I'll be in London July, June the 6th and the 7th. I'll actually be there before that, but I'll be doing the School of the Prophets. Go look at all the dates for the School of the Prophets at jenniferleclair.co.uk. Andre, my friend who takes me to get coffee. Andre, the powerful man of God who was kind enough to drive me and Prophet Vanessa to get coffee. You know how you win my heart with coffee. Andre, good to see you, brother. All right. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm stalling to see if I can remember what it was. You guys, go check out jenniferleclair.co.uk. I have not put a video up there yet. We're working on that. The ministry headquarters for our ministry there in the U.K., and the three houses of prayer that we have as well in the U.K. Amen. You want to start a house of prayer in Europe somewhere or in America? Go fill out the form on our website, Awakening House of Prayer. It's under, I think, Ministries, Plant, and AHOP. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you probably tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to, going to do any Facebook Lives today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bless you.